Copenhagen Suborbitals is an amateur crowd-funded manned space program. Since its beginning in 2008, Copenhagen Suborbitals has flown five home-built rockets and two mock-up space capsules. Their stated goal is to have one of the members fly into space above 100 km, on a sub-orbital spaceflight, in a space capsule on the Spica rocket. The organization was founded by Christian von Benson and by Peter Madsen, who was convicted of the murder of Kim Wall in 2017. Peter Madsen was excluded from Copenhagen suborbitals in 2014. The organization successfully launched its Nexo 2 rocket in summer 2018. As an amateur organization, the 55 members use their spare time on the project, while at the same time having regular day jobs. At the annual General Assembly, they elect a chairman and board members. Currently, 2019, the chairman is Karsten Olsen. Topic: Astronauts. As of 2017, three members are candidates to become the first astronaut to fly on the Spica rocket: Mad Stenfot, Anna Olsen. Karsten Olsen, father of Anna Olsen. Topic: Crowdfunding. Funding comes from worldwide donations, many of them on a monthly basis as members of Copenhagen Suborbitals support. This is augmented by fees from speeches and lectures done by group members. Also, in 2015 Copenhagen Suborbitals taught students from the National Technical University of Singapore in basic rocket design, for which the group received a fee. All income goes directly to the group's project, with all members working completely for free. Sea launch A unique aspect of the project is that all rockets are launched at sea. As a non-governmental, non-commercial organization, flying rockets from land is virtually impossible anywhere in the world. Therefore, the group conducts all flights from a mobile launch platform, MLP Sputnik, in international waters on the Baltic Sea, east of the Danish island Bornholm. The port of Nexo becomes the Copenhagen Suborbitals Fleet's homeport during the summer launch missions, affectionately dubbed Spaceport Nexo. The group operates three ships MLP Sputnik, a twin-hull, self-propelled mobile, launch platform that has carried all the group's rockets and space capsules since 2010. Owned by Copenhagen Suborbitals. M. S. Vostok. Originally built as a rescue vessel for the German Coast Guard, she's the command ship during launch and recovery, acting as flagship of the mission fleet. Owned by Copenhagen Suborbitals. M. S. Antares. Support ship. Owned by Copenhagen Suborbitals member Karsten Olsen during missions, the three vessels are augmented by multiple ships often including the patrol vessel MHV 903 Hajorto from the Danish Naval Home Guard, boats and aircraft. When not deployed, Vostok and Sputnik are based at Copenhagen Suborbitals HQ in the port of Copenhagen. Topic. History Copenhagen Suborbitals was founded in 2008 by Christian von Benson and now disgraced Peter Madsen, who was later convicted of murdering Kim Wall, as a non-profit, 
crowd-funded project where important aspects of the operation were described in detail on blogs and lectures. On the 23rd of February 2014, the board of Copenhagen Suborbitals announced that Christian von Benson had left the group after falling out with Madsen. In June 2014 Madsen also left the group, after years of disagreement with the other members of the group. Since then Madsen has had no connection with Copenhagen suborbitals. <laughs> Suborbital space flight profile From the launch site on the Baltic Sea, the Spica rocket will carry the Spica capsule and the astronaut into space above 100 km. The capsule will separate and fall back to Earth, where it will be decelerated by a balut and parachutes, and land back in the Baltic Sea. Topic facilities CS started on a barge called M.S. Half Machine in Port of Copenhagen. On 1 August 2009 they relocated to its base and office on Reef Schalioen, the old Burmeister and Wayne shipyard, in Copenhagen. Their workshop is dubbed HAB-2 Horizontal Assembly Building, as a reference to NASA's VAB. Topic. Rockets and engines Topic. Spica In 2014, Copenhagen suborbitals settled on the basic design for their first manned rocket and space capsule. The rocket will be named Spica, and will stand 12 to 14 meters tall with a diameter of 950 mm. It will be powered by the BPM-100 engine class, using liquid oxygen as oxidizer and ethanol as fuel, producing 100 kN of thrust. It's likely to feature pressure blow-down tanks, optimized by a dynamic pressure regulation DPR, system, but turbopumps are also a possibility, albeit they are difficult to build. Flight control will be thrust vectoring via a gimbal engine. The rocket will be fully guided by home-built electronics and software. Most of the systems and technology will initially be tested on the smaller Nexo class rockets in 2016 18. The space capsule will be of a tubular design as its predecessor Tycho Bra, but its greater diameter will allow the astronaut to assume a sitting position during launch and re entry, in order to withstand the G forces. Topic. BPM-2 and BPM-5 In 2014–2015 the group designed, built and tested a series of smaller engines with a nominal thrust of 2 and 5 kN. The BPM-5 class will fly on the Nexo IN-2 rockets in 2016–2018, paving the way for the much bigger Spica rocket and engine. The purpose was to validate the performance and operation of the group's new engine design direction. The tests were highly successful, with results exceeding expectations. Different fuel additives such as TEOS as well as different jet vane material were also tested. The BPM engines are bi-liquid rocket engines using LOX and ethanol, regeneratively cooled by the ethanol fuel. The spring summer 2015 test firings used passive pressure blow down, and in winter 2015 2016 will see the test firings continue with a dynamic pressure DPR regulation system, which then will fly on the Nexo 2 rocket in spring 2018. Topic. 
Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Engines and propellant 2008 to 2014. From 2008 to 2012, the group based the work on a hybrid rocket, using liquid oxygen as oxidizer. Originally, the HEAT-1X rocket was to be fueled by paraffin wax, but a ground test 28 February 2010 revealed that some of the paraffin wax had only partially melted, instead of evaporating. The result was that HEAT-1X had less power than expected. A ground test firing of HEAT-1XP P for polyurethane was conducted the 16th of May 2010. It was positive the polyurethane had the right power but showed heavy oscillation. Until 2011 the group had performed more than 30 tests of various engine types at their rocket engine test facility at Riefschaleoen. In fall of 2012 a concept engine using white fuming nitric acid and furfural alcohol was tried using a static test setup. In 2012 it was decided to switch to bipropellant, liquid-fueled engines running on liquid oxygen and ethanol. HATV The HATV hybrid atmospheric test vehicle was a 220 mm diameter hybrid booster used for testing purposes. It is one third the size of the heat rocket. It produces approximately 12 kN thrust within a combustion time of 20 seconds. Topic HEAT-1X Heat-1X hybrid exo-atmospheric transporter was the rocket booster module intended to launch the space capsule Tycho Bra into space. The combination being known as HEAT-1X Tycho Bra. The rocket design was the result of numerous static booster tests of the solid fuel epoxy and the liquid oxidizer nitrous oxide. A combination which was also used in the scale-down test rocket HATV hybrid atmospheric test vehicle, which was only one-third the size of the heat. Stabilization of the rocket was by rollerons, a mechanism also used to stabilize missiles. The rocket was successfully launched 3 June 2011 but the test was aborted at an altitude of 2.8 km. Topic. TM-65 and TM-65IIA and TM-65IIB TM-65 and TM-6-5IIA, B were liquid propellant engines using 75% ethanol and liquid oxygen as oxidizer. These engines produced about 65 kN thrust. First static tests were conducted in May 2012. One TM-65-2 engine was for HEAT-2X and one was for heat 1600 la The TM-65 engine passed the test undamaged, and was fired at up to 50% of its rated thrust. The group planned to repeat the test with higher thrust levels, until the TM-65 class in 2014 was abandoned in favor of the BPM-100 engine concept. HEAT-2X The HEAT-2X was a rocket built for flight testing the TM-65 engine. It was planned to carry a 1 to 3 scale, 80 kg space capsule mock-up, TDS-80, into the stratosphere. 
The rocket was not flown as it suffered an engine fire during a static test in the summer of 2014. The rocket nozzle imploded and a welding seam opened resulting in the expulsion of all the ethanol fuel some 500 L in just three seconds resulting in a large fire which damaged the part of the rocket. The engine failure and subsequent fire was filmed up close with a high-speed camera, which although burned on the outside, survived the inferno enough for the film to be recovered. Topic. Heat 1600 LA and Heat 1600 The Heat 1600 LA and Heat 1600 after the 1,600 mm diameter of the rockets, were the biggest rocket concept by the group, and was in pre-production in 2013. However, the 1,600 mm diameter rocket and capsule concept was abandoned in 2014, in favor of the 950 mm diameter Spica rocket and capsule. Heat 1600 LA was to be a full size version of the Heat 1600 with only one TM65 engine. The Heat 1600 was planned to fly with a single 260 kilonewtons engine or a cluster of 4 XTM65 engines fed by turbo pumps on a single stage. Topic: Space capsules. Topic: Tico Bra The Micro Spacecraft MSC, named Tico Bra after the Danish astronomer, has a steel pressure hull, with room for one passenger. The passenger would be able to view the outside through a perspex dome. The occupant would fly in a half-standing, half-sitting position, in a specially designed seat, and wearing anti-G trousers to avoid blackout. Another compartment contains both the high-speed drogue parachute and the low-speed main parachutes for deceleration. The sheer volume of the MSC will provide the buoyancy in the water upon touchdown. The first MSC was christened, Tico Bra 1, and its first flight was unmanned using a crash test dummy. A new aluminium MSC called Max 1 named after Maxime Faggot is under development. According to the group, development on this capsule has been abandoned due to the physiological problems associated with rapid acceleration of a human in standing position. The craft is now on display in the Tycho Bra Planetarium in Copenhagen. Tycho Deep Space Tycho Deep Space is a space capsule developed by Von Benson. The first version officially named, ''Beautiful Betty'' by Michael Bertelsen, the capsule's protector. The unmanned capsule was launched on 12 August 2012 at sea by a test launch escape system, off the coast of Bornholm. The launch did not provide enough height for the parachute to deploy and the capsule was partly damaged on impact with the sea. The capsule is 2 meters in diameter, allowing for an astronaut to be in a horizontal position relative to the acceleration during launch and landing. Topic. Missions. The group originally focused on launching from a land-based spaceport like Andoya, Kiruna or Iceland the focus however turned towards a sea launch, just outside the territorial waters of Denmark. 
A permission to launch was given by Danish authorities, but the first option, the North Sea, a possibility suggested by Danish Civil Aviation Administration Staden's Luftfahrtsvasen, was rejected in 2009 by the Danish Maritime Authority they preferred another area and then gave a formal and written permission to launch from the military firing range ESD-138, ESD-139, which is located on the position 55 degrees 02 57 N 15 degrees 36 minutes 11 seconds east in the Baltic Sea. It is just outside Nexo on the Danish island of Bornholm and is therefore nicknamed Spaceport Nexo. The CS then had to build a floating mobile launcher platform MLP, called Sputnik after the Russian spacecraft which was the first artificial satellite to be put into orbit. Their launch campaigns includes the following ships. MLP Sputnik, at first had to be towed, but later it had two diesel engines installed, and now sails under her own power. MHV Hajorto, a naval home guard vessel which serves as mission control and recovery vessel. Two small rigid hulled inflatable boats. Topic. 2010, the first launch attempt The first full-scale test launch aimed at 30 km altitude was planned to be conducted off the coast of Bornholm between 30 August and 13 September 2010. The vehicle carried a crash test dummy, Rescue Randy. Instead of a human pilot, with manned flight not planned for some years. The success criteria were the completion of the sea voyage and countdown with launch and recovery planned as a bonus. On Tuesday, 31 August 2010, the privately built Danish submarine UC 3 Nautilus pushed the launch platform Sputnik carrying the rocket and spacecraft from Copenhagen towards the launch area near Nexo, Bornholm. A launch attempt was made on Sunday, 5 September. September 2010, 14.43 Central Europe summer time, but the motor could not be started due to a failure of the LOX valve which is assumed to be caused by insufficient heating of the valve. The design famously included a consumer hair dryer for defrosting the LOX valve, in effect it was not the blow dryer but its power supply that failed, the group promised to come back the year after to attempt the launch again. Topic. 2011, first flight of HEAT-1X Tico Bra Having done updates on the rocket, and the valve, and with MLP Sputnik under her own power, and a support vessel, the group sailed again for Spaceport Nexo on May 28 at 4.50 am. They again met up with MHV Hajorto, a naval home guard vessel that serves as mission control and recovery vessel. The second launch attempt was more successful and the maiden flight took place 3 June 2011, at 1632 local time 1432 Greenwich Mean Time. The HEAT-1X rocket lifted off and ascended to an altitude of only 2.8 km, because mission control had to shut the engine off after 21 seconds. Although there were problems with the parachutes, the HEAT-1X Tico Bra was recovered and the flight produced useful data for subsequent development of the program. Topic: 2012 missions. Topic: SMARAGD flight 
The SMARAGD rocket Emerald in Danish is a 5.7 meter two-stage rocket weighing 160 kilograms, intended to reach an altitude of 8 kilometers, that was used for testing various technological aspects of the operation. On July 27, 2012, the team set out from Nexo towards the launch site, intending to launch the SMARAGD rocket. After some initial problems with the remote launch control, the rocket launched successfully just after 1 p.m. and reached the maximum altitude of 8.2 km. It was evident shortly after takeoff that the nose cone, containing electronics, broke off during launch, possibly due to the large acceleration of estimated 20 grams. Topic: <laughs> Tycho Deep Space Less Flight. On 12 August 2012 at 9.18, the space capsule Tycho Deep Space, was launched to test a launch escape system. However the parachute did not deploy properly and the capsule was damaged on impact. Several media had misunderstood the schedule and proclaimed the launch to have been started prematurely due to an error. The test was considered partly successful by the team, due to the successful rocket launch and the unsuccessful parachute deployment. The launch could be followed live via live streaming from several video cameras, additionally high-speed cameras were mounted on the MLP. Topic. 2013 – Guidance System Development Topic. Sapphire 1 mission Sapphire 1, a modification of the HATV, was a 4.5 m rocket whose main purpose was to test the active guidance system developed by Copenhagen suborbitals. It was successfully launched on 23 June 2013. Nexo I Nexo I was launched Saturday, the 23rd of July 2016, with inaugural BPM5 engine. It was a partial success. The supply of liquid oxygen to the engine was insufficient due to partial premature evaporation. Topic: Nexo 2. The preparation of the launch of Nexo 2 is ongoing. However, as of April 2018, the rocket didn't get off the ground this year due to no-go from the Swedish air traffic control. It launched on 4 August 2018, with slightly modified BPM-5 engine. Topic. Goals and records achieved Copenhagen suborbitals achievements include Most powerful amateur rocket ever flown First amateur rocket flown with a payload of a full-size crash test dummy First main engines cutoff Miko command sent to received and performed by an amateur rocket handling and orchestration of a sea launch by a small budget organization on the 3rd of October 2013 Copenhagen Suborbitals was awarded the Breitling Milestone Trophy Award by Fédération Aéronautique Internationale at a ceremony in Kuala Lumpur. Topic: Support Group. 
On 5 October 2010 an independent group of space enthusiasts founded the Copenhagen Suborbitals Support Group The main purpose of this group is to "...support CS economically, morally and practically in their mission." Within two days after its founding, CSS reached 100 members. November 15, 2011 marked a major milestone for CSS as 500 members was reached. As of early 2014, around 1,000 members were recorded. By paying a fixed monthly amount, the members of Copenhagen Suborbitals support now covers most of the fixed costs for the project in addition to donating various forms of hardware. By 2015, CS was supported with GB £12,500 per month.